show your support. Follow me on Twitter. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to Hidden Gems. In this series, I have a look through some of the older games that perhaps have slipped us by and some of the newer games that maybe haven't got the recognition that perhaps they deserved when they were first released. And in this video, I am going to be looking at specifically the Nintendo Switch version, because that is the version that I actually own, of Stardew Valley. Now, this has been called the kind of spiritual successor to Harvest Moon, and on the Nintendo eShop it set me back 10.99, but you can also purchase this on the PlayStation Store for 11.99 and I'm assuming it's available at a similar sort of price for PC. Might even be a little bit cheaper because it has been out on that platform a little bit longer. So what exactly is Stardew Valley? In its most basic sense, you could just call Stardew Valley a farming simulator. The game starts off with you visiting your grandpa who is very, very ill, and he gives you an envelope. One day at work, while you are working for the Joja Corporation, you open this envelope as advised by him, and in it is basically the deed to his old farm in Stardew Valley. And with this kind of comes the task of taking over the farm and getting it back up and running and in working order. And it definitely needs that. The land around it is very, very overgrown and rocky. So you kind of need to clear out a plot of land first with all the, uh, the kind of weeds and trees and stones and everything in your way. Just so that you can kind of plant some seeds and get a bit of a start. The first person you meet is actually the mayor of the town and he does gift you some basic tools and some seeds to give you a little bit of a start. Now you could just really focus in on the farming elements of this game, planting better and more expensive seeds to get better and more expensive plants from it, and selling those on in order to make money. But if you are playing it just for that, you are barely scratching the surface of this game. There are so many other things to consider whilst playing. For example, there is a cave towards the back end of the town where you can go mining. The only thing I will say is make sure that you have a spot in your inventory when you first enter so that you are able to pick up the sword that is given to you because there are one or two monsters inside that you might need to deal with. Also towards the south of the town there is a fisherman and he tasks you with finding various different fish in different water conditions such as the sea or various lakes different fish that come out at different times of the day or even times of the year and he will buy these fish from you. You can also use them in various different ingredients for various different meals throughout the game. You can also go on a basic forage where there are different kind of berries or plants growing throughout the town and sell those on as well and other resources can easily be gathered outside of the mine such as cutting down trees and clearing weeds to get seeds and also to kind of clear away stone areas to get not only stones for building resources but also things like coal as well. And the idea is to build up these resources as much as possible and a little bit of money and you can develop your farm to house various different animals to give you other objects such as barns for cows and chickens to give you milk and eggs but again that is really just scratching the surface of that element as well. Outside of this there are various other townspeople who you can interact with and create different sort of relationships with. There are also a few single characters as well in the town and if you strike up a strong enough relationship with some of those single people 
you can also develop that relationship further into a romantic one. Now, I know it's not much, but it is quite a nice little element that it doesn't matter on the gender of the townspeople or your character. Anybody could have any kind of romantic relationship with anybody else, which is quite a nice little touch. And it doesn't close off any corridors for any player that wants to play in any way that they want to. And that is basically what this game is in a nutshell, really. It gives you all of these different options and you can choose to try your hand at various different things at least once and see if you like it and connect with it and take it further. The game doesn't penalise you at all for not doing anything, but it obviously gives you greater reward the better you are at a certain element. Now outside of this there is a letterbox outside the front of your house and a notice board in the town square and on these at any time can be given other tasks by certain townspeople. Now most of these are just fetch quests but some of them require a little bit of extra development in order to obtain those certain items. These can be taken on whenever you like or they can be ignored at will, it's completely up to you. The world itself is fairly expansive, it's a small sort of town area with various people living in different houses. They go about their day on their own kind of time scale and do certain things on certain days. For example, the local shop is closed on a Wednesday, so if you want to sell your goods or buy new seeds, you will have to go to the Joja Corporation supermarket to do that, or you can sell your items in a kind of a store box that's outside the front of your house. However, you won't get that money until the day has ended and you can't purchase anything from there. The last thing I want to point you towards is the town's community centre. You are told that this used to be quite a vibrant place where most people used to gather for various different things and it has now basically been neglected and turned into a kind of run down shack. In each room in the community centre there is kind of a almost like a collection pot and if you put certain items that are required in each one you unlock certain things within the town. For example, there is a broken down bus that takes you out to the desert and in this desert is a shop with items that you can only get there and a few other people with certain interaction that again you can only do there. But in order to get this bus up and running you need to put the right crops in this collection pot and basically unlock the fixing of the bus. Likewise, near your farm, there is a rundown greenhouse. And if you again put the right items in a certain room in the community centre, this gets fixed up, and then you are able to plant different crops within the greenhouse protected from the elements outside. So, yes, what exactly is Stardew Valley? Well, it's anything you want it to be, really. If you want it to just be a farming simulator, that's fine, the game will allow you to play that way, no problems at all. If you want to try these other bits and pieces, then it will encourage you to at least try them out, and if you don't like them, you can just leave them to one side, you will not get penalised for that. So there we go, that was my take on Stardew Valley. If you have played through the game yourself, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will be back next month with another hidden gem, but rest assured, I will be popping up throughout this month with various other videos. So please subscribe to the channel to make sure you do not miss any of my content. Till next time, I've been That British Guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.